Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, I'm Jin Ho Jung from Georgia Tech, and today I am going to introduce anti fudging technique called the fudgification. This work is a collaboration between Georgia Tech and University of Georgia. Fudging is very good because fudging discovers many vulnerabilities. For example, a group of researchers discovered 50 vulnerabilities in 50 days, which is very amazing. And nowadays, Google support cluster the fudging, and they, they discovered 9,000 bugs in two years. Again, fudging is very nice. When developers develop a program and release the binary, testers launch fudging to discover the bug, while the normal users enjoy the binary. However, unfortunately, attackers also use fudging to discover the vulnerabilities, and whenever they find the vulnerabilities, they may use the bug to infiltrate your system. This is not a good story. So our motivation begins here. We wanted to make the fudging only effective to the testers by proposing the technique called fudgification. By applying the fudgification, we release the fortified binary to the user. It means attackers only, attackers has to use the fortified binary for the fudging. As a result, attackers may end up with less number of a bug, while the testers discover more number of a bug using the normally compiled binary. That's our motivation. For this research, we assumed one realistic scenario. First, the adversary tried to discover bug by using the fudging. However, Attackers does not have access to the source code or the normally compiled binary. Attackers only has a copy of the fortified binary in this scenario. Finally, the attackers knows about the fudgification technique and try to nullify for the better fudging performance. Considering our motivation and the SRAM model, what could be a good research goal? Of course, we should reduce the number of discovered bugs. That's most important. And since we don't know which puzzles the adversary will use to discover the vulnerabilities, our solution should be generic to the most of the puzzles. And the fortified binary should introduce high overhead only to the attackers, not the normal users. Finally, since we assume that adversary knows about our technique, our solution should be resilient to the adversarial analysis. Now let's talk about possible solution for the anti-fudging. Packing or obfuscation could be one candidate because it slows the fudging execution. But at the same time, it also slows the execution speed of the normal user. And bug injection technique tries to inject many number of unexploitable bugs to the binary. But since it has static pattern of the bug, it is not uh, resilient to the adversary. And puzzle detection technique tries to identify the puzzle process. And whenever it detected the fudging process, it tries to show different behavior. But this is not generic because it requires specific information about the fudger. And it is not also not uh, resilient to the adversary due to the static pattern. And emulator detection technique uh, tries to infer whether the process is run by the emulator, such as QEMU. Uh, similar to the uh, fuzzle detection, this solution is not generic and not uh, resilient to the adversary. So now, we came up with a new solution called fuzzification, which satisfied all the criteria. Fuzzification hinders advanced features of modern, modern fuzzers. First, modern fuzzer is very fast. They are very fast with uh, several features by utilizing parallel execution or the hardware features or using the fork servers. So to make them slow, we propose the first component called the speed bump. And nowadays, fuzzers check the coverage of the execution. So to make the coverage management user list, we propose the second component called the branch trap. And finally, modern trend shows that fuzzer is working with the symbolic execution or dynamic data analysis tool. So for the hybrid fuzzer, we prepared for the third component called anti-hybrid. 
Okay, now let's talk about the first component. Now you are seeing a very simple control flow. By using the many number of samples, we first identify frequently and rarely executed paths. And then, it, this is important, we inject delays from the most rarely visited edges. From this example, since the edge between 1 and 2 is the most rarely visited edge, we put the delay here. This is a very effective solution because normal user usually follows the common path indicated by the blue line, whereas the attackers search for the new path. So our important intuition here is that the impact of delay is more significant to the adversaries. Now you know where to inject the delay. The next question will be how to inject the delay. The simple solution is to use the slip function. However, this is very easy to nullify. This is very obvious to the adversary. So instead of using the slip function, we use randomly generated code to avoid the static pattern matching analysis. We also impose the control flow and data flow dependencies to avoid the automated analysis. Let's see the detailed example of the delay. All right, assume that we identify this location is rarely executed code. First, we try to define the global variable and make a function call. And actually in the function, function is consists of the randomly generated code, but not just random, but also try to modify the defined global variable and modify the local variable by using the past, uh, past, local, uh, past argument value here. This is how the delay works using the randomly generated code. Now let's move on to the second component called the branch trap, which hinders coverage ma management. Uh, we built multiple functions on, on the branch trap so the branch term number one, fabricate input sensitive path. Let's see uh, what the uh, input sensitive path means. There is one input and goes through the control flow one, two, and three. And further mutate the input slightly. And the control flow also shows that the control flow uh, one, two, and three. It means the same control flow and same coverage. Meaning that the further think, okay, the second input is not that important, let's discard. That's how the effective puzzle works. However, after we apply the branch trap, the first input visit our fake pass between one and two. And the second input visit another fake pass between two and three. Now further think, okay, both inputs are very important. Let's keep both inputs. And then further will waste of their variable times. Now let's see how the detail of the fake pass. We took the idea from the return-oriented programming. So there is a function, and you know that the function have epilogue instructions. First, we try to uh, identify all the same instructions called the code snippet across the binary. So in this example, we identified n number of the same code snippet. When there is a function called invoking, we calculate index value using the actual argument. And using the index value, we make a jump. In this example, we decided to jump to the second code snippet and then jump to back to the original instruction. This is very effective because whenever data is changed, the argument value is also changed. It means data change will affect the control flow. Branch trap number two, try to saturate the feedback state. So it consists of a huge number of deterministic branches. So similar to the uh, speed bump, it is installed in the rarely executed path and wait a long time, like several hours and several days. Once the further visit this location, it suddenly saturates coverage bitmap. So after the saturation, further will not discover the new interacting input because all the, all the coverage is marked as visited. Finally, let me introduce the anti-hybrid component, which hinders hybrid fudging. To hinder the hybrid fudging, we tackle the challenge of the hybrid fudging. For the dynamic data analysis, tracing the implicit flow is very expensive. So we transform existing explicit data flow into the implicit data flow. And for the symbolic execution, PEX explosion is a very long problem and difficult to solve. So we introduce an arbitrary PEX explosion. For example, if there's an input variable, character variable, 
And we define another variable called anti-DTA here. And we try to infer the contents of the original input and assign new input to the newly defined variable. Since there is no direct, direct relationship between two variables, dynamic anti-analysis engine cannot taint the new variable here. And for the PEX explosion, we transform the branch condition to use the hash operation. Since the hash operation will require a large number of symbols, symbolic execution engine may end up with a timeout. Now let me put it all together in the work, work floors. So there's a source code and we put many number of valid and invalid samples to the binary and collect the profile of the binary. After we collect all the information, we try to inject three components using the profiled information and then measure overhead. If the overhead is satisfied, user specified the budget, we try to inject more component. And if there's no space to inject component, then we release the fortified binary to the user. We implemented fortification using Python and C++. And in our evaluation, we try to answer the number of reduced, reduced, reduced the discovered paths and the bug, and effectiveness on the various fuzzers and overhead. And overall, uh, we reduced the discovered coverage by 71%. And this shows one example. So compared to the original binary, which indicates as an orange line, the fortified binary, the blue line, shows significant reduction on the discovered path. When you test on the different binaries, we could observe the similar tendency. And when you test on the various fuzzers, we could also reduce down the discovered path. When we talk about the discovered bug, uh, on the binutil libraries, we could reduce 97% of the discovered crashes and 67% of the reduction on the LABA data set. And there's an overhead, so there is a 62% of the size overhead and about 4% of the CPU overhead on the binutils. And for the real application, 5% uh, of the file overhead and less than 1% of the CPU overhead. So our solution is best effort-based approach against adversarial analysis. And our solution is complementary to the other defense techniques. So we are not hiding all the vulnerabilities, but we are introducing significant cost of, to the, the adversaries. So interestingly, the next talk is also about the anti-fudging by the MLA. So we briefly compared the two researches. We both support the delay execution, and we also support fake coverage. But fortification only supports coverage saturation, and anti fudge only supports crash prevention. And we both support anti-hybrid, and fortification considered countermeasures. OK, fortification makes the fudging only effective to the testers by using three components, speed bump injected delays, and branch trap insert input sensitive branches. And the third component, anti-hybrid, hinders hybrid fudging techniques. Thank you. Questions? Hey, Dan from Google. Um, so if I've never seen this binary before, I don't really have any information about it, and therefore I don't really know normally what a commonly executed path looks like and what a rare path looks like. Could I use um, programs that have been transformed by this technique? Can I use kind of artifacts from that to potentially find bugs quicker? Oh, and what do you okay. think could yeah. be used to address that? OK, we assume that the user of the fortification is the developer of the software. It means the developer who knows about the main path and who has enough number of test cases. Mm -hmm. So he can identify what, it, what the normal path is, what the really executed path is. Right, but the whole point of this is to make it so that an attacker can't you know, effectively fug and, or fuzz your program and find bugs. Right. But these artifacts you're introducing on the rare paths mm -hmm. are something I'd want to look for as an attacker to potentially look for bugs. Can you comment on that? Uh, actually, if there's a bug on the really executed path, uh, it's still we can delay because we are delaying the path to the really executed one. So it means if there's an actual bug in the, that path, mm -hmm. actually we are delaying most effectively that path. Okay, I think we can talk later okay. about this. 
I see. Maybe as a follow-up while until other people walk up, um, what happens if you continuously update the software and you have multiple different versions of the software to analyze maybe after patching or something like that? Would this destroy the added um, guards that you insert or not? Uh, or could an attacker use this to analyze where the guards are being placed? Oh, in, in terms of the, the developer side, right? Yeah. Uh, as, as an attacker, could, it, like, could you leverage and collect multiple updates and then do binary diffing okay. to see where the different guards are being inserted to knock them out or something? Interesting question. I think uh, even if there is an update, uh, uh, I think we can still uh, uh, delay the crash discovery because we will deterministically identify the real executed path and we will also put the, another component into the similar places. So, so my answer is yes, we can delay. The okay, maybe we'll take it offline. Okay. But go ahead. Um, hi, uh, Dominic Maya, TU Berlin. Uh, first, a quick comment. I don't believe that uh, people would then continue and test their own software. I think they just use your tool and hope that nobody finds their bugs. Mm -hmm. But the, the question is, mm -hmm. Do, do you think you can inversely use all your techniques to remove it again from the binary? Uh, short answer is yes, because I know about this technique. And there should be, always should be the way to inverse this operation. But our point is that we can significantly delay the time for the inverse and time for the analysis. That's our point. Okay, thanks. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.